So tell me about the inspiration behind this, and it's a tribute to mothers, you say? It's, it's a tribute to all mothers. Uh, okay. uh, basically, I, I wrote it for my own mother, yeah. uh, but uh, motherhood is, I find it, it's a universal thing. Yes. It's not, most mothers are, have that amazing depth of compassion. I think I am who I am, although, like, you know, when a person travels, yes. you learn a lot of things, but you also miss a lot of things right. that you don't realize until a certain age. So, like, suddenly, like, my mother is not there. Yes. I, I lost that her. time with her. My music is always informed by different uh, variety of, uh, you know, influences. Like, I remember as a child, I would like, I never liked one kind of music. There's a part of some musicians, oh, I'm a classical musician, this is too simple and this and that. That's right. There's no such thing. If I do something that people did 200 years ago, right. and I do exactly the same, right. A, I won't be able to be as good as them. That's, that's true. Because they are the inventor <laughs> right. of yep. that style, right? They, are right. The invent they invented that that's style. True. Welcome to today's episode of Khas Mulakat. It's a special one. It's Mother's Day and we are talking to Muhammad Asani. He is a sitarist and a composer, among many other things. He has a new album called Wayfinder and from there he's got Lullaby for Gulli. It's a tribute to all mothers. So happy Mother's Day and here's today's episode. Welcome to the studio, Muhammad Asani. Welcome. How are you? I'm good. Very lovely to see you, Sonia Ji. Yeah, nice to see you. Nice to see you. <laughs> so tell me about Lullaby for Gulli. I'm very excited because I got to hear it. Mm -hmm. And uh, the video was just released yesterday. Yes, correct. And I got to watch it. It's absolutely beautiful. Thank you so much. Yeah, you're Thank welcome. You. So tell me about the inspiration behind this. And it's a tribute to mothers, you say? It's, it's a tribute to all mothers. Uh, okay. Uh, basically, I, I wrote it for my own mother. Yeah. Uh, but uh, motherhood is, I find it, it's a universal thing. Yes. It's not, most mothers are, have that amazing depth of compassion. Right. And uh, for me, uh, people often talk about God. And for me, God is like unconditional love. Yes. The any, only thing I've experienced close to that is yeah. a mother. Mother, yeah. yeah. And you're right, it's universal. Every culture has mothers. Yeah. And it's a universal love. That's yeah. absolutely Animals true. Animals and so on. Yeah. Tell yeah. me about your mother. So her name was? My mother's uh, full name was Gul Shakar. Gul Shakar. That's uh, which beautiful. Which rose and sugar. <laughs> yeah, that's a perfect name. <laughs> yeah. She's beautiful. Very, you know, and um, uh, she was, uh, she sang a lot of lullabies to me when I was, uh, when I was a child. Okay. And... Um, and one day I was talking to one of my dear friends and, and uh, called Siresh Ra from the Indian Summer Festival. We were doing a project okay. and, uh, and it was about women and the contribution of women uh, in societies. Yeah. And at that time we were looking at uh, particularly Middle Eastern women and then we found like lots of amazing women. Right. Uh, like uh, there's one woman called Fatma Firi who had started the first university in the world oh. and there were many other amazing stories and we realized that a lot of the knowledge actually passes on from a mother to a child. Right. Right. Yes. And in some, you know, there's a thinking that like in your family, if you want to educate your three or four children mm -hmm. and you have only means to educate one person, then often, you know, you educate the woman because she She'll is more on. likely to pass that knowledge on to right. uh, the, the, the next generation. Right. Uh, so that, those were the sentiments. And then, uh, you know, we talked a lot about Then I thought my mother had passed just then. You know, she passed in 2014. I'm sorry. Um, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So, and, um, and I thought that, oh, you know, she sang me so many lullabies. And why don't I write a piece for her? And why... Let's make it a lullaby. Right. So I wrote that piece in, in her memory. Yeah. And I believe that whatever I wrote, I had an initial idea. And afterwards, when I was composing, things just came to me. Right. Like, you uh, just felt it. Yeah, I, I just felt it. I could not, I can't repeat that again. Right. Something oh. like in music that happens, yeah. just happens. You can't recreate that. Right, like a stream of consciousness. Uh, yeah, like when you're writing. Stream of consciousness, yeah. Same kind of thing. Yeah. Amazing. So almost like you're channeling your mom's guidance. I, I believe so. Like whatever yeah. is her blessing. <laughs> oh, that's lovely. Yeah. yeah. And then watching the video of it, um, you know, there's the images that we see of the mother and the child. 
Um, and then there's an image of you mm -hmm. and your mother. Yeah. Um, and then also the it's like a very interesting um, setting because you've got your modern meets almost like um, you know the traditional music. It's there's a hy hybrid. Hybrid, yeah. So yeah. tell me about this. I, I think most things that I do is hybrid yeah. because I've lived in three continents. I was born in Pakistan. Okay. I studied uh, in England and now I'm living in Canada. Right. So three different <laughs> continents, right. which I personally love because uh, although I miss all those connections that I've left behind in Pakistan of and course. in England, yeah. um, but uh, life, uh, I think I am who I am. Although, like, you know, when a person travels, yes. you learn a lot of things, but you also miss a lot of things right. that you don't realize until a certain age. So like suddenly, like my mother is not there. Yes. I, I lost that her. time with her. Right. right. Yeah. So when people move, they pay a very high price to travel and learn something and you don't realize until but it's all part of life experience and it is what who you become yeah it makes end, up right? who you are exactly you are. yeah, yeah. so tell me this uh the album the elements of the album you've got a lot of uh, different sounds throughout the throughout, actual yeah, yeah yeah tell us about so, that so basically i uh, i my first instrument that i played was like bass guitar then i did a degree in piano, Western classical music. Okay. And sitar was actually one of the last instruments that I learned. Oh, wow. Yeah, I played tabla That's as well. Ironic. The ironic, okay, yeah, yeah, ironic. Uh, and then I have this connection with the sitar because it's like sitar, when you hold it in your hands, like yeah. I, I just, it's something, you know, like you can just really become part of it. And it's, right. it, it's, a, it's a beautiful sound. It's an experience, you know. Um, so, so basically my music is always informed by different a variety of uh, you know influences like i remember as a child i would like i never liked one kind of music there was a lot of diversity that i was very attracted to and yeah. that's what i find that just that universality you know in music there is that connection as well right because for me for me music is a language yes just like french urdu hindi punjabi right um you have to spend some time yeah you know, it's just like living somewhere in a city and after some time you will acquire, yep. you know, you will understand. So music is universal, but you have to like taste it and, you know, familiarize. And, and any music that I spend more time with it, I end up liking it. Right. You know, yeah. there's a part of some musicians, oh, I'm classical musician. This is too simple and this and that. That's right. There's no such thing. No, not yeah. for you. You're not limited. No, I'm not limited. Yeah. And that actually makes makes you richer, right? Right. So when I was writing a, a, this album, uh, my daughter uh, played a song by Ariana Grande. It was like a remix uh, of my favorite things. Okay. And I thought, oh, this tune, I've heard it in a very yes. traditional context, but this is like R&B, drum and bass and so and so. Yeah. I said, I want to make a track like this, then yes. and there, when I, my, instantly. So one of my tracks called Black Sugar has that feel okay. to it. Although it's in a very uh, deep rock called Rag Marwa, which is a very seriously classical, yeah. but then you have R&B mixing with it. So it's got very All diverse, di different elements. Uh, different elements. Yeah. yeah. Well, even when I was listening to Lullaby for Gulli, I could hear almost like a little bit of rock. Yes. Like it, I was really impressed because I thought this I is something I would listen to in my everyday life. Mm -hmm. Because traditionally you think, oh, sitarist, it's got to mm -hmm. be my parents' music. I don't yeah. want to hear that, yeah. right? <laughs> a lot of people would have that misconception. Yeah. But it's very powerful. I, I think it is a very powerful uh, instrument. Yeah. Uh, I think like uh, sometimes like sitar, you know, there's a expectation that this is what sitar does. Yeah. And, if, you know, if you say, okay, you know, like I can play this instrument, let's see what else it can do. Right. And the instrument is so powerful that it can play almost any genre. Because sitar, you can play straight notes, you can bend the notes, there yeah. are rhythmic strings that you can incorporate. So, uh, you know, it's a lot of fun. Like, like, you know. That's amazing. In a way, you're taking the sitar and you're allowing it to grow. Like you're actually, uh, you know, introducing to the world the the growth of the sitar, if that makes any sense. I, it, that makes sense to me because like uh, that's something that this path is like uh, not everybody supports you on this path because some people say you're not playing traditional music. Right. Although I am playing traditional music, yes. right? Yeah. But I'm just changing, uh, presenting in a different way. And I also yeah. play, I love traditional music. S but I think that uh, a role of, a, of an artist or a musician is that if I do something that people did 200 years ago, right. and I do exactly the same, right. A, I won't be able to be as good as them. That's, that's true. Because they are the inventor <laughs> right. of yeah. that style, right? They are right. the invent they invented that's that true. style. Yeah. Uh, plus, how am I contributing 
uh, in the evolution of the music. Right. So these are like different thoughts that come into your mind yeah. as, a, as an artist when you're like, you know, am I going out of tradition? Is it good or bad? Right. And that is, that is left for interpretation. Right. There's no single answer for that, in so, my opinion. So you refer to the people that, the classic, the, you know, the originators, the inventors, and then there's you, so juxtaposition to that, you're the innovator. So there's you the could say that in my, in way, and I take that yeah. full inspiration from those amazing classic, yeah. uh, you know, compositions and yeah. theories and so on. Yeah, but you're making it more relatable to everyone now, and as we grow and as as society changes, I mean, yeah. you know, back when these uh, inventors were making these, this music, yeah. not everybody was allowed to enjoy it like freely yeah. now. Exactly. You know, it's like you take a car that is a 1952 model. And it's a beautiful car, it's very well maintained. But yeah. if you find one or two parts that you can add to improve it, why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you do it? Yeah. That's and now it appeals to more people. Yeah. 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 You've Absolutely. just improved upon something that's already amazing. You've I've just tried, my humbly tried. Yeah. But well, I love the my, fact that you... Sorry, go ahead. In my estimation, I think it's uh, something new. So that's yeah. what I'm doing it. Yeah, I love the fact that you referenced Ariana Grande. Because, mm. you know, it's just, it's such a... I would never expect someone that plays the sitar to say, oh, yes, I was listening to Ariana Grande and I felt inspired. Like, that's amazing to me because that right mm -hmm. there sums up the fact that you're so diverse. Yeah. That's amazing. I, I think <laughs> the life should be about uh, going out of boxes. Yeah. Because, uh, you know, we are all given a certain role, certain family that we are born into, certain country, certain religions uh, or no religion sometimes. Uh, but is that all are we or right. there's more to us? Is there more? Yeah. And I think that's the question we need to ask. Right. So the way that you think, the way that you are, you attribute a lot of that to your mother? Yes. Yeah. I do. Yeah. That your mother was your inspiration for music? Yeah. You miss your mom. Yeah, yeah, I do. I can feel it. Oh. Yeah. yeah. When I know that you, um, you're having a hard time talking about her. And, um, you know, wherever she is, I'm sure she's so proud of you because you've done such a beautiful tribute to her. So whenever you feel strong enough... Um, if you can tell me, you know, just a few things that she instilled within you uh, as you're growing up, because I can, I can feel the emotion. So I'll, yeah. I'll let you take a second. Maybe we'll yeah. just take a little break here, Please, yeah. and uh, we'll, we'll watch the clip. Yeah. We'll show you, Thank we'll show you. you the clip. So we're gonna cut to the clip right now and show you the clip of uh, Lullaby for Gully.
that you enjoyed that clip and now we're going to talk to Mohammed Dasani again. So that clip was amazing. We couldn't show the whole thing, but we'll add a link so that people can actually see the entire um, Thank you. video. It's yeah. beautiful though. Thank you so much. So when we talk about your mother, um, you know, it is a lot of your childhood that probably comes to the surface and you remember the things that she instilled in you. So tell me, what about your mom uh, inspired you to do so much in music? Um, I think it was like her openness. Yeah. Uh, to things and ideas and al although she sang songs to me so even subconsciously when she sang those songs yeah. you know it went in into my head I didn't even realize what was happening you right. know, as a child yeah uh, there were a lot of stories there was a lot of funny stories as well okay uh, that she you know uh, yeah invoked in me and uh, what inspired me is that I think is her kindness because I think to be a musician, if you're compassionate, yes, then you, you feel more, right? And that's what makes you sensitive, and you know, and that's a quality in music that is, uh, you know, can be of, uh, uh, yeah, uh, yes. of some some depth. Yeah. So I, I find that, like, you know, if your heart is stirred in a certain way, right, uh, your music will translate that in some ways, right? So I think my mom made me. Uh, Feel things more sensitively. Right. It could be somebody's pain, or it could be, or it could be something really. Oh wow! Isn't that wonderful? Yes. But that kind of like inquiry. Right. I remember when my mom passed away, and we had a, a guy who looked after the whole complex where we lived. Okay. And he was about seventy-five something. And when we were coming back um, after doing the prayers, he was crying, and he said, "I've become an orphan now." And I'm thinking, you know, look, this is a mother quality oh. you know like uh, somebody who's like you know not related to her and he's 75 and he feels that he's orphaned because my mom always then he told us things that we didn't even know about my mother that Amazing. she always shared her food with him and yeah you know that kind of thing so, so kind. yeah that's that's the thing so it was a loss not felt only by her family but yeah. people that felt that they were her family yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's amazing yeah. So what kinds of songs did she sing you? What's a, can you share maybe a song that she sang with you when you were little? She sang songs from Mughal Azam. Oh, really? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, that's amazing. Yeah. Okay. She liked Mukesh as well. Are you a good that's singer? A, I am I, I am a musician. <laughs> <laughs> that's an interesting that's, answer. Yes. Okay. Mughal is Mughal wonderful Azam, though. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And she sang a lot of songs and funny songs and so. Really yeah, funny yeah, songs yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah. So she had a great sense of humor. Like, you know what? I would do things to her like, and she would let me get away with murder so she'll be sleeping yeah and i will get a whole makeup box of hers or somebody of my sisters oh, and i'll I'll, t I'll make her into a clown oh. <laughs> paint her nose red and i think she, i'm sure she was she knows that this yeah. guy is having She's, fun yeah. this is my child let him laugh and this yeah. and that and when she wake up she will have a red <laughs> nose and, so she was like that you know right really kind of like yeah yeah. Just, just childlike. Me, yeah, childlike. Yeah. yeah, which allowed you to just be who you are. Exactly. Instead of feeling yeah. like restricted, because often yeah. in our culture, especially, yeah. it's um, frowned upon to pursue artistic expression. That's right. Yeah. You know, so yeah. that's really nice that she allowed you to be she allowed that me. way. She taught me how to laugh. Yeah, that's wonderful. Fun. Yeah, that's so good. Yeah. Very good. So in this um, in this video and the music uh, from this video, where tell me where did you film? Okay. So we filmed, um, one thing about the video that the first thing came across that like, you know, it, there's a story because yeah. I know that I've written this for my mother. Right. Uh, how do we portray it? Because there are no words. No. And that's the thing that's interesting for me because I always like to have words. Mm -hmm. I'm very much a person that likes lyrics so that I can, like, um, you remember what was the song? It's a very old Hindi song. Uh, I can't remember exactly how it goes, but it's like, uh, Hum tum hai chahate hai aise, right? Yes. Manne wala koi zindagi chahata hai jaise. Okay. Those lyrics, I'm like, oh my gosh, mm. like that to me is gold. Yeah. But then hearing your music without any lyrics made me cry. Mm. I felt so much emotion. Yeah. And I was like, how is this possible without lyrics? Mm. How do you do that? Right. You know? Okay. So yeah. tell me the story, because <laughs> you're saying that you filmed this. And yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So that's a, that's a, that's a, uh, that's a difficult question to answer because, like, uh, first of all, I believe that I had determination. Yeah. I wanted this story to be told. Okay. Right? And I had passion about it. I was very passionate about it. So I started thinking about the concept of the video, like, you know, how... Um, and eventually things, you know, uh, fell into pieces. You know, like you have one... Uh, I, 
first I didn't know whether I was going to have feature a mother in the video or yeah. how it would be or, you know, but then I had mother, then I had an older mother, then I had a child. And yes. so things grew from there. Yes. And, um, and even like till the very last minute, like I was thinking, do I put some words underneath to explain a certain thing? Then I thought, no, just leave Don't it to it. interpretation, yes. you know? Yeah. And I think it was a combination. I was so grateful to have uh, people like who played the, uh, the part, like the, the yeah. young mother, Rachel Vikhaji, yeah. uh, was superly graceful, yeah. very sensitive, uh, talented, the, the young boy, um, Ali Muhammad and Kamal Dingra, the older mother. They were so, it seemed like uh, it was like a, it, it, everything gelled. Right. And that's what I'm saying. I feel that this was my mom's blessing, that yeah. everything gelled. It just works. That's what I feel like. I just yeah. was, a, you know, just doing things, but I was guided in that way. Right. Yeah. yeah. And I honestly, I feel that you're right about that because even in my preparation for, you know, my work here, I think, what should we do for Mother's Day? What's a good thing to do for Mother's Day? And I was kind of trying to, you know, brainstorm. And then you and I spoke and I thought, oh my goodness, this is perfect. So even us meeting today was probably your mother putting us together because I haven't seen you for about four years. You know, yes, we we're talking correct. about that. And, um, you know, we can now showcase this as our Mother's Day. Um, tribute yeah. because this is the perfect thing to showcase from us. Oh, thank you, you know, I am very proud to have this on our channel. Thank you, sure. thank you. I'm delighted to be here. Yeah, so there's a quote out there from Jazz Views um, that states that said, this music is nothing short of bewitching, you know, and uh, when I was listening, and it's a longer quote than that, but um, it's just, it actually, you get lost in the music. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're the one that, that created this, but as a listener for myself, I, I, I listened to it and I was just, there wasn't one part where I was like, oh, you know, I'm going to turn it off. I just had to listen to the entire mm -hmm. thing. It's very mesmerizing. Mm -hmm. So I, can, I can't wait for our viewers to see the whole thing in its entirety. Thank and you. Um, Thank yeah, you. I'm very, I'm very happy for your success. Thank um, you so much. And then Steve Jobs had said the only way to do great work is to do, uh, do work that you love. And, you know, you're doing something with passion. You love mm -hmm. this and it shows. Thank yeah. you so much. You're so welcome. Thank you. So I'm going to ask you that if there's anything that you want to tell our viewers about your mother or about, you know, music in general or any message you want to give to our viewers, you can just look in the camera over there and give them okay. your message. Sure. Just, Thank you. Thanks for listening. Uh, one thing that I have, I'm nobody to, to say anything to mothers, you know, like, uh, but I'm, I'm just humbly going to say that uh, uh, mothers should always look after other mothers as well. So in that way of empowering, so if your mother and if you have um, a daughter-in-law or, or your, your daughter going to a house or something, make sure that, you know, you back them up. I think that's what one thing I would say. Um, uh, I'm too small to say anything in, in, about mothers. Uh, one thing I would say that children of mothers, uh, any children, you know, like uh, this time is precious and it's a gift. So make sure you spoil your parents, your mothers, the way they've spoiled you. And I'm just grateful to have a mother like I have, uh, who's uh, taught me to learn and laugh. And when my mother passed away, I, I, I prayed one thing, that um, I thought that I don't want to be her child again. Because she, I didn't want her to serve me again. I wanted her to be my child, so I can pay her back. Oh my goodness. <laughs> that is really sweet. She did sweet. enough for me. I yeah. couldn't have more. Oh my gosh. You are such a lovely man. That is, uh, you know what? Your mother can see you and she's so proud of you. So Thank you've you. done very well. It's a very nice thought, you know, mm -hmm. that you want to take care of her one day. Yeah. Yeah. That's very nice. Thank you so much for joining Thank us you so, today. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank and you. Happy Mother's Day to you Thank too you. and Thank all the mothers. So <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. So you heard the message um, saying, you know, treat each other with kindness and lift each other up. It was a women's empowerment message, actually, which is really wonderful, especially on Mother's Day. So treat each other well. Happy Mother's Day to all of you. And thank you so much to Mohammed Dasani for joining us and sharing this beautiful tribute to your mother. So happy Mother's Day from us at Sanja TV.